Hi guys, Marduk here. Welcome. Today I'm going to demonstrate one of the best and most popular globe knots for covering a cube. Naturally, this one can also be used to cover a sphere, but it is a shame not to try it on a cube as well. So here I have a couple of examples. You can see just how well the globe knot covers all of the sides as well as corners of a cube. To tie our knot, we're going to be using a globe knot mandrel. It should be about the same size as our core. This is a 4 pin globe knot mandrel, so it has 4 columns of pins. Column 1, Column 2, Column 3, and Column 4. We have 4 rows of pins on either side. So rows A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. All of the columns as well as pins are filled out, so sticking out of the mandrel. So this is the pin setup. The core, so the cube, I simply cut off out of a square piece of wood. I'm going to soften the edges by doing a bit of sanding. So the cube after the sanding process. The edges are nicely rounded off. For the cordage, if you're going for this sort of a look, you will want a single piece of paracord 550, 14 feet long. Gutted, so the inner strands are removed. For this sort of a look, you will want two pieces of 95 cord. A lacing needle is the final piece of gear needed. To prepare our mandrel, we're going to slide one end of our cord through a hole near A1. Tie a stopper knot to prevent your cord from slipping through the hole. Attach a lacing needle onto the other end. Here is the full run list for the knot. Follow it line by line, alternatively follow me step by step. Because I'm using flat 550 paracord, it does tend to twist during the tying process. So if I spend a bit of time untwisting my cord, well, that's the reason. Just a heads up. We begin tying at A1. We pass to F3. From F3, we move to B1. From B1 to G3. From G3 to C1. From C1 to H3. From H3 to D1. From D1 to E2. From E2, we pass over, under, over,
reaching A4. From A4, we repeat the sequence, so over, under, over. Reaching F2. From F2, we pass the opposite to our previous strand. So, under, over, under. So, this is going to be a team through the knot, traveling the opposite to our previous strand. Reaching B4, we again travel the opposite to our previous strand. So, under, over, under. Reaching G2, we again pass the opposite to our previous strand. So, over, under, over. Reaching C4. From C4, we again travel the opposite to our previous strand. Over, under, over. Reaching H2. From H2, we again pass the opposite to our previous strand. So, under, over, under. Reaching D4. From D4, we yet again pass the opposite to our previous strand. So, under, over, under. Reaching E1. From E1, we pass to A3, starting over, under, over, under, and so on. So a simple over one, under one sequence. All the way to A3. From A3, we are going to pass to F1, starting under, over, 
under, then over to, under, over. Reaching F1. We are again going to travel the opposite to our previous strand. So, under, over, under, over. Under, over, under. Reaching B3. From B3, we again simply do the opposite to our previous strand. So, over, under, over, under to. Over, under, reaching G1. From G1, we again start the opposite to our previous strand. So, over, under, over, under, and so on. So a simple over one, under one sequence. Reaching C3. From C3, we again travel the opposite to our previous strand. So starting under, then over, under, over to, under, over. Reaching H1. From H1, we again pass the opposite to our previous strand, so starting under, then continuing over under, over under, and so on. Reaching D3. Again, traveling the opposite to the previous strand. Starting over, under, over, then under to, over, under.
reaching E4. From E4, we pass the opposite to our previous strand, starting over, then under, over under, and so on. From A2, we start with an under, then over, under, over, under, over, under. Then you can see that we need to pass over to, under, over. So again, we traveled the opposite to our previous strand. Reaching F4. From F4, we again simply travel opposite to our previous strand. Starting under, then over, under, over, and so on. So a simple over one, under one sequence. Reaching B2. We again travel the opposite to our previous strand. So starting over, then under, over under, and so on. From G4, we again travel the opposite to our previous strand. Starting over, then under, over under, and so on. So a simple over one under one sequence. reaching C2. Again, from C2, we are traveling the opposite to our previous strand. Starting under, then over, under, over, and so on.
reaching h4. From h4, we again travel the opposite to our previous strand. Starting under, then continuing our over one, under one sequence. reaching D2. From D2, we now travel opposite to our previous strand, which essentially means that we are splitting two parallel strands. So, traveling between them, doing the opposite. Over under, over under, over under, and so on. Reaching E3. We are now at our final pass. From E3, we again travel the opposite to our previous strand. So essentially splitting two parallel strands. So starting at E3, over one, under one, Then continuing R over one under one sequence. reaching A1 yet again. Place your working hand next to the standing one, work your cord a bit deeper into your knot. Let's say up to about the middle point of our knot here. We next undo our stopper knot, pull our standing end out, up to our working end here. So the two ends exit at about the center point of our knot. This way, we can hang our cube if we want to. Next, we sink in all of our screws. These four points here on either side, so this one, this one, 
this one and this one and on the other side this one this one this one and this one are going to be placed onto the corners of our cube Personally, what I do is pin these points onto the corners. This is not an absolute must. I find it a good way of having everything lined up. After pinning the corners, I start at one end, pulling slack through the knot into the other end. After two passes of tightening, our cube wrap is complete. In the case that you're using two pieces of 95 cord for your globe knot, you tighten up your first cord a bit more loosely. Then you grab your second cord, which can be a lot shorter, my first cord was 14 feet, this second one is 8 feet long. Work it right alongside your first pass, starting anywhere in your knot. Let's say here. And we simply follow our first pass through the knot. I would like to sincerely thank you for joining me and I hope to see you in my future videos as well.